Damn, my face is shiny as hell. Hello everyone, hope you are well. And I really hope you didn't catch coronavirus. Oh God, what a state the world is in these days, huh? But it's okay, we will adapt, we will make it through because that's what humankind has done for millions of years. Okay, so a lot of companies in the Bay Area and I'm sure in other places are enforcing slash really strongly recommending everyone to work from home to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity for me to talk about helpful tips in working from home. For some of you, this might be like your first time working from home. And for others, this might not be anything new because you work from home usually anyways. Regardless, I wanted to share some of my tips for how I work from home um, because I definitely started a place where I had no idea how and now I love it. I love working from home. Every job that I've worked at for like the last four years, I have had at least one work from home day per week because I find that it really helps uh, me regain my balance and ground myself um, so that I'm not just at the office for like 40 hours a week, which is kind of a lot. And while the coronavirus is super scary and it keeps getting scarier, so don't forget to wash your hands, y'all. Uh, I think one of the silver linings in this is that we might work more towards a remote work culture as a society, as an industry, which is something that I am personally really excited about. Because especially in the Bay Area where cost of living is super, super high, traffic is really really bad uh, i feel like work from home culture might really help to mitigate some of those effects and might uh, allow other people who don't want to live in silicon valley or can't afford to live in silicon valley to work at silicon valley companies and i know that remote work does have its implications in that sometimes people say that it makes them work for longer hours because it's hard to separate between work and life um, I think that as long as you keep some structure to yourself and that you have uh, some routines that you like to follow and that you figure out something that works for you, then it can totally work. And I know some of y'all are like the ones that just like really wanna go to the office because you just wanna see people and I feel the same way because I currently identify as more of an extrovert. But right now we're in a pandemic, so stay at home and don't spread germs and don't get sick. So. Uh, we're in this together y'all and I wanted to share my tips and tricks. Also, if you have any tips and tricks of your own, leave them in the comments down below as always. Uh, so let's get this thing started. And before that, if you were maybe brought here by the algorithm and to me, then thank you algorithm. Uh, and hello, my name is Mayuko. I make videos about tech and lifestyle and career advice stuff. Uh, so please consider subscribing or just watching some of my other videos, which I'll link up here. So the thing that I wanted to address first is kind of the theme that underlies all of these tips that I'm gonna talk about, which is about structure. So when you're working from home, you're literally in the comforts of your own home. And I know it's really enticing to just rest and chill and watch TV and do whatever. And if you want to, that's fine. That's your own truth, whatever. Um, but for me, when I am in the mode of, hey, I want to do stuff and I want to get work done, then creating some structure in my day to day so that I get there seamlessly and easily without needing to pull my mental state along to get there, uh, that's I think really an important part about having a successful work from home environment. So the first tip is to stick to your usual routine for going to work because that sets the stage for the rest of the day and kind of the tone for the rest of the day. So kind of try to do all the things that you would normally do on a work day, just minus the commute. So those are things like waking up in the morning at the same time as you usually do. And I know it's really enticing to stay in bed because you don't have to go anywhere and stuff, but starting off your morning at the same time helps your body remember that, hey, we're going to do things today. And waking up at the same time in the morning helps kind of start off the domino effect of all the other things that are happening. So waking up at the same time, make sure that I walk my dog at the same time in the morning. Um, that's really important to me because I get some fresh air and I get a little bit of light exercise in before my work day. I also eat breakfast in the morning. I am a breakfast person. If I don't eat breakfast, I get really hangry and I can't think and I'm just a very cranky person. So I usually eat what I normally eat, like a bowl of really good oatmeal or a Japanese 
Courtney's breakfast to help myself get into the state of things are going to happen today. And I have like my morning tea or my morning coffee. I have my water. It's like really just all of the same stuff that I would be doing to prepare for a regular work day. So step number two goes hand in hand with the morning routine, which is about getting clothes and getting yourself physically ready for a work day. Again, I know it's really enticing to just stay in your pajamas all day, um, but I think that at least getting out of your pajamas into something else. It doesn't have to be like exactly what you would wear to work, cause like I hate wearing jeans and I wear jeans to work, so I don't wear jeans on my work from home days. And instead I wear like some loungewear on the bottom but it does help me to get out of my, okay, I'm done sleeping mindset. And I always wear like a shirt or something that I can make sure that I can hop into a call really easily without feeling embarrassed or sloppy. And for me, getting ready also means like putting my makeup on because that helps me get into the mindset. A lot of this is just getting yourself and your body into the mindset of working. Um, so yeah, putting makeup on like I usually do in the morning, like if I was going to work also helps me to get there. Tip number three is about your working location. So I know, again, really enticing to work from your bed because it is the most comfortable place in your house. But get yourself out of there. Find a spot that you were going to call like your office. If you have a desk at home like I do, then great spot. If you don't, then your dining room table is a great spot. Also like your living room couch is a great spot. Just somewhere other than your bed or somewhere that you see as relaxation. And having a space that you can claim that you can just call your kind of mental space uh, is really important because having a space like that um, helps you to better context switch between work and home as well. And so make sure that this area is clean, make sure that it is quiet, make sure that it's somewhere that you can take phone calls or video calls really easily in case that you need to hop onto something. Um, I think just having a location for something like that um, is really important for working from home. So my next tip is more kind of like a piece of advice than it is like a tip, I guess. Uh, and it's that it's okay if your workday working from home looks different from your workday working in the office. Because let's be real, you are in a completely different place, you're in a completely different environment. And so I think that having a little bit of flexibility there and uh, not pressuring yourself, not expecting that you're going to perform the same way um, or do the same amount of work or communicate in the same way, uh, I think is a realistic expectation to have. And I think it relieves you of the stress and pressure that you might put on yourself for working from home. And I know before this tip, I talked a lot about getting your mindset to a place of, okay, I'm going to work from home. Um, but also I think it's just like a balance. Like what's the balance that you wanna have between like feeling like you're at home and working from home versus like emulating working from your office as much as possible. And I think that's probably going to be a different answer for everybody, but I think it's a realistic expectation to have to know that your work from home day is going to look very different from your work from office day. So for me, once I realized that it was a little bit more forgiving and I had a little bit more flexibility in how I spent my time. And I think the biggest change that I incorporated into my life that helped with this was to just take breaks. because breaks are important. When you're in an office, you take breaks when you go to the bathroom, when you're getting a snack, when you join a conversation that's around your desk with your coworkers. I think you'll notice that there's actually more breaks than you think that you take at work, but when you're home, there aren't as many distractions maybe, or maybe there are. But I think that including breaks into your day to day and sometimes even scheduling them or just being mindful that you're at least taking one or two breaks a day um, helps you concentrate better throughout the rest of the day. So I take breaks during the day by like going to the bathroom, making myself some more tea, um, taking my dog out on an afternoon walk to get some fresh air. I also like to make lunch at home when I'm working from home um, because it, I feel like it uses a completely different part of my brain from coding um, and also eating. And sometimes I'll just like watch TV while eating too. And so those breaks are really important to me because they help ground me and create that like, okay, I can rest my brain from the work that I've been doing like 
20 feet away uh, and just let myself like relax a little bit uh, so that I can reset for later. So my next tip is to communicate really well with your teammates when you're working from home. So this tip will apply to a lot of people who work on teams, especially in the tech industry, which is where I'm coming from. But it's really important to communicate, really over communicate when you're working from home, especially because you're not seeing, like actually seeing these people that you're working with um, when you're working from home. Making sure that you communicate on Slack or Discord or whatever team chat that your team uses, um, what you're thinking, how you're feeling, and how other people can communicate with you uh, is a really important part of uh, the success of a remote work culture. So make sure to tell your teammates how you want them to contact you. Because you're not in a real office, then people can't just come up to you and tap your shoulder and be like, hey, I have a question. Uh, instead, they're most likely going to communicate to you over a team chat or email or phone or video chat. Um, and so setting your own boundaries too and telling them what those boundaries are really helps to have a successful work from home day. Because the reality of it is is that people need stuff from you. You work on a team after all. And so telling people, okay, hey, I am focused right now, I'm concentrated, um, I don't really want any distractions unless it is an emergency. Um, maybe like setting your status on Slack to tell people that or putting yourself on do not disturb. I oftentimes will like go into a team chat and be like, hey team, here's what's up. Like I am available all day through all of the usual means, um, but I might be heads down on something. So if you really need to contact me for something, then call me or then email me. Um, so that way the team knows exactly how to get a hold of you if they really need you. And otherwise, if they need to get a hold of you or you know it's not super urgent, they know how to contact you too. And it's totally normal to expect that lots of communication is gonna happen over chat channels and stuff. And so making sure that you are responding kindly and typing in the way that you would talk helps other people pick up on the tone of your voice and the tone of what you are trying to communicate. Those are important things when you're not seeing people face to face. And going hand in hand with that previous tip is to make sure that you are available during normal working hours when you're working from home. Because you work on a team and everybody works full time, everyone wants to depend on each other and needs to depend on each other to get the things that they need when they need it. So make sure that you're working the regular hours that you would usually, usually like nine to five, uh, and let people know if you're stepping away from the computer or you need to just take a break for a little bit. Just let them know so that they know exactly what you're up to so that they don't have to keep guessing like, where, where are they? Like, why can't I get any help from them? But I think that helps teammates trust you and know exactly how to communicate with you so that they're not left guessing, like, when are you gonna be available? So for me, I also always make sure that my sound is on for notifications and all my chat notifications are on on my phone. Um, I also make sure that everything's on on my computer and my computer is fully charged so that I can respond to anything quickly should anything come up. And also being available when you usually are means that it's also okay to be unavailable when you're usually unavailable. Uh, make sure to log off at the end of the day when you would usually leave work and create boundaries because otherwise it's really easy to work like a 12 hour day. So just close your laptop, let people know like, hey, I'm off for the day. Like, let me know if there's anything that comes up, but otherwise I'll see you tomorrow. I think creating boundaries like that between you and your teammate really helps you to create boundaries between your work and home too. So make sure that you communicate all of those things. I know it can be kind of uncomfortable because you're talking about uh, like your boundaries with people that you might not have ever talked about before, but ultimately that really helps um, with kind of your mental state and your emotional state in working from home. And it also just gets rid of a lot of awkwardness and tension that could otherwise exist. So I highly recommend doing this. So we're on my last couple of tips, uh, which are all meant to prevent the kind of stir crazy feeling that you get from working from home multiple consecutive days. I know that some people in the Bay are already feeling this because it's like day three of working from home and not seeing other people for that long can be quite a long time for some folks.
So rapid fire, some tips that I have for preventing stir craziness. Number one, I said it before, but change locations. Don't stay at your desk for the full eight hours um, or don't stay at your desk every day for an entire week. Just change locations within your house uh, or change, you know, go to a cafe or go to like a communal area, maybe in your apartment complex or something. Just have a change of scenery and that will help a lot. My second tip is to move your body. Uh, your body is probably not gonna move as much as when you work from the office because you're not needing to walk to places as much. Unless maybe like you have kids at home or um, you have pets or something that needs taken care of or whatever, but you're most likely going to be more sedentary, uh, which we are already a very sedentary group of people. So what does that make us now? Stone or something like that. So. Move your body. Make sure that you are standing up every once in a while. Go on a 10 minute walk um, once or twice a day. Do some stretches because, oh man, becoming like late 20s, like my legs and my back are starting to feel how long I sit and it hurts. So do those things. And also exercise, like exercise is important. And especially because our brains are working so hard then making sure that our bodies are catching up by doing some exercise. Um, yes, do that, please. My last tip for preventing stir craziness is to use a Pomodoro timer, which I think really helps with kind of the focus and motivation bit. You could work from home and stay super focused for six hours a day, but I am not one of those people. And so having like small incremental chunks in which I work and then I take a break and then I work and then I take a break helps kind of make sure that I'm changing up things and that I'm not just sitting there with my own thoughts for hours on end. There's a lot of systems out there that can help track your work time and your rest time. Um, I use a Pomodoro timer. There's a bunch of apps out there that you can use to help you pace your focus time and your break time. But I find that it really helps me to hone my focus, uh, especially when I'm working from home. Cool, so those are my tips for working from home. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I really enjoy working from home. I actually prefer that as my default, if anything, uh, because I feel like I have more control over my day to day and I can have a more balanced work life balance, I guess, uh, especially because I can easily context switch between work and home better. But I hope that your area is not super impacted by coronavirus. Um, and if it is, I'm sorry, but we will make it through, we'll be fine. And see this, I hope, as an opportunity for how to work from home better, as well as how to be more compassionate to each other and take care of each other. So that is it for today. I hope you like this video. Hit thumbs up, click subscribe, leave a comment, be happy, don't worry, whatever you want, seven rings or something like that. That's how that song goes, right? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.